In this video, we get started with modules and outputs in Terraform and Azure. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is going to be a long one. But modules and outputs are one of those core concepts that's indispensable for creating quality, reusable Terraform code. But don't worry, I'm going to step through it piece by piece. I have timestamps and chapters below if you wanna jump ahead or go back. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, check out my course on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD at Unibee.com. The link is below. And check out the Join button if you're so inclined. Let's get started with what a module is. A module is a piece of reusable code. Modules contain a collection of multiple resources that create some form of infrastructure. Every programming language has some version of a module. In PowerShell, they're called functions. When the code is called, we pass in inputs, and if all goes as planned, we get the results as outputs. Reusability is key for modules. If you create a block of code that deploys something useful, it's great to be able to reuse or share that code. Let's talk about what a module isn't. A module isn't a single instance of a resource. It may be tempting to turn everything into a module, create a module for a VNet, a storage account, an app service, for example. Each of those are single resources and not the makings for a module. A module is a collection of resources. I'm going to paraphrase Terraform documentation because they sum it up nicely. A module is not a thin wrapper around a single resource. If that's what you're deploying, just use a resource block. No sense in complicating things with a module. The name is a good indication if something should be a module. If the module name is simply Azure SQL, that may not be a good use case for a module. But if the module name is Azure App Services with SQL Backend, that may be a better candidate for a module because it's a composite of resources. A module is contained in directories. We've already created modules. The root module we created in previous videos was a module. All projects start with a root module like we created before. We can call child modules from within the root module. The child module is the container for other resources. The root module can call child modules, and those can have child modules as well. But it's best to keep the module structure as flat as possible to keep things readable. A module will have input variables. These are variables sent from the calling or root module. They have resources. This is what is deployed when the module is called. And outputs. Let's pause for a second and talk about outputs. When we call a child module, it runs in its own environment. The output from the module is not passed back to the parent module by default. That's a problem if we need that data from the child module to finish a subsequent step. We can tell the child module to return data to the root module with outputs we can then use the data elsewhere in the code. Let's go a little further with the structure of a module. I'm going with a standard module structure from the Terraform documentation. Different environments may have slightly different variations on this, but should be close. We'll start with the root module. This is the main entry point for the module. This is the only requirement when creating a module. Basically, we have to have a directory with some code in it to be a functional module. It should have a readme file, either called readme or readme.md. The md file uses markdown. A module can have child modules if that helps organize the code. A module with a readme file is intended to be reused. A module without a readme file is intended only to be a dependency to the parent module. A license should be included, especially if that module will be published publicly. There'll be a set of files, the main.tf and variables.tf. We went over those in a previous video. Also an output.tf file that defines the outputs. Descriptions should be included with variables and outputs. This will seriously help the next person that has to reuse the code. And that next person may be you. You can also supply examples in a separate example directory. The directory and file structure for a simple module will look like this but it can be as complex as this with each child module and example having their own set of files. We're going to create a couple simple modules next that go against some of the rules I just outlined, but rules are meant to be broken, right? 
These are simple one resource modules. The purpose of this demo is to show how to pass inputs and outputs between modules. It's easier to demonstrate this with a less complex environment. We're going to create a root module and two child modules. The first child module will create a resource group and output the resource group name. We'll pass that to a second module to create a storage account. The second module will pass back a randomly generated storage account name. We have a couple other items we'll cover along the way. We'll use an expression to concatenate some values, create a random string, and use a function to convert a string to lowercase letters. Let's hop into VS Code to get started. Here we are in VS Code. I have a new root module or folder on the local disk called module example. Create the similar folder structure if you're following along. By the way, I'll make this code available. Just check the link below. Under that, we have two new folders, one called resource group and the other one storage account. These are for, well, the resource group and storage account module. This is just an example of calling modules and returning output. In real life, it may not make sense to create modules for a single resource like a resource group or storage account. I tried a larger deployment, but thought this makes for a better example, at least for now. First, let's create a main TF at the root module right under the module example directory. Let's add our provider. We can get that from the Terraform registry at registry.terraform.io. Here we are. Let's go to Azure, use the provider, and we'll copy this. Let's go back to VS Code, and we'll paste that in. Remember to update the provider to features. We'll just leave the features empty. Once you've got that done, save and close. We'll come back to this shortly. Next, let's create the resource group module. We'll start by going into the resource group folder. That's empty, so we'll create a main.tf along with the variables.tf. Let's go to the main.tf, and in main.tf under resource group, let's add the resource group resource. We'll come back to the Terraform registry, go to documentation, and search for resource group. And there it is. We'll copy that and paste it into the main.tf in our resource group module. A resource group requires a minimum of two settings, a name and location. We could simply pass in those values for both, but let's do this a little different. We're also going to create a storage account. Let's use the same base name for both, so we can create two resources based off from the same base name variable. Let's go to variables, and we're gonna create two variables, a base name and a location. This one we'll call base name, That's going to be a string. And for the description, let's add a description. Next, we'll add the location. Now we have that base name and the location. So let's save that. And let's go back to the main.tf in our resource group module. And I still have that open over here. Let's update the location with our variable. Next, we have the base name. For the resource group name, I want to take the base name and add an RG at the end to create the resource group name. That's going to require us to create a new string based on the variable and the letters RG. To do this, we'll create an expression. We start by placing the expression in quotes. And then we're going to add the base name variable. So to do that, when we want to pass in that value into a string, we need to start with a dollar sign and then surround that variable in squiggly brackets. So that will use the value of var.baseName, and then at the end we just want to add an rg. So we'll go one over and rg. So now the name is whatever we pass in as the base name, followed by rg. Let's save and close these files. We're gonna test this shortly. 
But first, open up main TF under module example. We'll have multiple main.tf files in different directories. Make sure you're working in the correct one. From here, we'll call the module with a module block followed by the name in quotes. So we'll go to the end, add a space. We'll enter module to start the module block. And then we give it a name, resource group. Go to the next line, then type source. This indicates the location of the module. We'll give it a path to the module, the resource group folder for this example. Notice the location is in quotes. It starts with a dot, that's the present directory, then a slash, this is a Linux style directory listing, and then the folder or the module name. We have to pass in the base name and the location. Let's add the base name that matches the variable the module's expecting. Let's set the base name to Terraform Example 01. And then add the location. West US for this example. Let's save the file, and we'll test to see if this works. Open up the terminal, and we'll do a Terraform init. That looks good. Next, let's run Terraform plan. And notice we're running this from the module example directory. The output shows the new resource group will be created with the name Terraform example 01 RG. So our expression worked. That's good. Let's create a storage account module next. Close the main.tf file and go to the storage account module. Create the main.tf and the variables.tf file for the storage account module. We're going to create a storage account. Let's go into the Terraform registry and find the storage account. Azure RM storage account. We'll copy the resource block. We'll go back to VS Code into the main.tf. That's under the storage account module. And let's paste in the storage account resource. And for this example, let's get rid of tags. There are three items we need to supply, the base name used for the storage account name and the location. The location can be the same as the resource group, but it doesn't have to be. And the third is the resource group name. Let's go to variables.tf and add those variables. Let's start with the variable for the storage account base name. Next, we'll add the resource group name. And last, the location. Those are the three variables we need. Let's save this and go back to the resource group module main.tf. Here's the problem with storage account names. They must be globally unique. In the last couple videos, I added some random characters at the end to make sure the name is unique. I want to add random characters, but I don't want to have to add the characters each deployment. We're going to use a special kind of resource called random. This will generate a random string that will apply to the end of the base name for a unique storage account name. First, let's add the provider for this module. We'll go back to the Terraform registry. We're in the Azure RM provider. We need to find the random provider. So let's type in random. There it is, HashiCorp random. We'll go to use provider. We'll copy this. Let's go back to VS Code. And at the top of the storage account main.tf. And let's paste in the provider. Remove the provider block, it's empty and not needed.
Now that we have the provider, let's add a resource called random string with the name random. So this is a resource block. We'll start with resource. The resource is random underscore string. And the local name, we'll just call it random. We need to add some arguments. The length, we'll set that to six digits. There's another argument called special. This indicates if we want to use special characters or not. We're creating a name for a storage account, so we want to make sure this is set to false. We'll set that to false. After that, we'll use the argument upper, and we'll set that to false. Remember, we can't use special characters or uppercase letters for a storage account name. This will create a string that's six characters long with no special characters and no uppercase letters. Now that we have the base and the new random string, let's format the storage account name. Everything has to be in quotes just like we did with a resource group. We'll add a dollar sign, opening and closing squiggly brackets, and pass in var.base name. Again, that tells Terraform to use the value of that variable. So right after the closing squiggly bracket, we're going to add another dollar sign in brackets. And this time we'll add that random string. So we'll go random underscore string. That's the resource type. Dot random. Dot result. So that will concatenate those two values what we entered in as the base name and the random string. One more thing, and this is because the storage account name has to be in lowercase. We didn't create any formatting or input rules for the base name. If someone enters uppercase letters into that base name, the deployment will fail because that's not a valid storage account name. There's a simple fix. We'll convert the base name variable to lowercase with the lower function. We do that by adding the word lower right before var and then surround the variable in parentheses. That forces the var.base name to lowercase. Next, we have to change the resource group name and the resource group location to variables. We'll set the resource group name to var.resource group name. There it is. And we'll do the same with location, var.location. Save and close the files, and let's go back to the main.tf in the root module. Let's create a new module block for the storage account. So we'll start with module, and we'll call it storage account. We'll set the source. And that's under the storage account directory. We'll set the base name to match the resource group module. and the resource group name. We're going to run into a problem with the resource group name. That was dynamically built in the resource group module. Now we know the name is the base name with the RG appended to the end. We could simply add that. But if that code in the resource group module was changed, we'd have to update the reference to the resource group on the storage account module. That would be cumbersome. We want this to be as change-free as possible. This is a problem that outputs will help with. Let's save the file and we'll talk about outputs next. Let's close this and go back into the resource group module. We want that module to return something when it gets done running. We'll do that by starting with an outputs.tf file. Outputs simply return a value to the calling module. We'll create a new output block, and you guessed it, it starts with output. Give it a name for this example. I'll use rg underscore name underscore out. Then we give it a value. 
This is the value that will be returned. And that value is gonna be the value of Azure RM underscore resource underscore group. Dot resource group, dot example, and name. We can hop over to main TF to see that value. So it's resource, Azure RM underscore resource underscore group dot example dot name. This will return the value of the resource group name and assign it to the RG underscore name underscore out output. Save and close the file and let's go back to the main dot TF and the root module. Now when we apply this, the resource group module will be the first to run. Once it's finished, you'll return the resource group name in the output. We'll use that name to supply the resource group name to the storage account module. And we'll do that by specifying module dot resource group dot RG underscore name underscore out. Okay, and one last thing before we move on, we have to add a location. And we'll manually add West US. So in this step, we're simply calling the output from the resource group module and applying it to the input of the storage account module. This is how we can pass the output from one module and use it as input for the next. So let's save this file, open up the command prompt, and let's run terraform init. That looks good, let's run terraform plan. All right, let's take a look at the resource group. That's using the correct location and the RG at the end of the name, just like before. Let's look at the storage account. The location looks good, but look at the name. It indicates known after apply. What does that mean? Well, we told it to base the name off random characters. So we won't have a name until it's actually applied and those random characters are generated. So let's apply it now. You may notice it's created the random string. This will take a couple minutes to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, we can see the name of the storage account in the CLI or by going into the resource group in the portal. And there's our storage account with those random characters at the end. That all looks good, but at some point we may want to use automation and something like a storage account name could be used as an input variable for another module, especially because that storage account name is getting created on the fly. Let's go back to VS Code. We can close the terminal as well as the main.tf and go back to the storage account. We're gonna give the storage account its own outputs.tf file. We'll create a new output block with the name stg underscore act underscore name underscore out. We'll give it a value and that value is resource dot Azure RM underscore storage underscore account dot example dot name. We'll save that. We can close. And if we go back to main, we can verify that value we entered in the output block resource dot Azure RM underscore storage underscore account dot example dot name. Let's close the main TF. And one more thing, outputs are passed back to whatever called the module. For what we're doing with this example, we're calling the root module from the command line. The root module calls the resource group and storage account module. The outputs are exposed to the root module the way it sits now, but not to us. Let's open up the command prompt and run terraform output to see what outputs are available to us.
There we go. If I spell it right, it shows there's no outputs. Nothing shows because we didn't pass the outputs from the root module back to us. We had outputs from the resource group module and we'll have them from the storage account module the next time we run it because we just created the outputs.tf. So let's fix this. From the root module, the module example directory, create a new outputs.tf file. We're going to return the value of the resource group name and the storage account name. Create a new output block and give it the name STG ACT name. We'll add the value. The value is module dot storage account dot storage account name out. Next is the resource group name. So another output block. We'll call it RG name. The value equals the module dot resource group dot RG name out. Save the file. And before we run this again, let's destroy the previous deployment. That's providing you haven't rolled this into production yet, of course. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. Okay, that finished. Once done, let's run Terraform init. And Terraform plan. That's looking good. Notice we have a couple new things on the bottom, the output for RG name and storage account name. Let's run apply. pause here and come back once it's finished. Now that finished, we can see the RG name and storage account name output. Also, if we run Terraform output, it returns the two values as well. This is an example of calling modules and passing data back from the modules as output. We also added the random resource and lower function with the example. A module with a single resource may not be the best practice. Matter of fact, in production, it may be better to create a single module with both the resource group and the storage account, but this makes for a good example. We'll build on this example with more complex deployments in the future. That's it. That's the basic framework we'll use for creating modules in Azure. This may not have been the best use case for modules, but it's a simple example we'll use for creating reusable modules in the future. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.